Hey everybody, what is up? This is the Comic Cowboy and this is going to be a lot of fun. I thought in this video we would only look at raw comic books pre-code horror. There is just something super exciting when you visit a friend or you go to a show and there's a long box and you're looking through the raw comics. And I can tell you, I have plenty, plenty of slabbed books but there is just something wonderful, not from a collecting or an investing perspective, although there's always an element of that. In the case of these books, I always love, with pre-code horror in particular, because they're actually quite good to read, the material's great within the pages. Not always the case with all Golden Age books, but pre-code horror, the stories are fantastic, they're gruesome, they're horrifying, they're creative, they're inspirational, and they're just a lot of fun. So, you know, I've got a little bit of wine here, and we are going to look at a collection of raw pre-code horror here. I've got a lot of these books in raw state, and I just picked out a sampling of them. So we're just going to go through them. I don't have all the information on the year or the particular title of these books, so I'll do my best. Frankly, this is just a celebration video. If you love pre-code horror and you like to see these books in this state, I think it's just going to be a lot of fun. And I'll do this in two parts. This will be part one. And I got another stack in there that'll pull out all random. These are just randomly distributed into the box, not in order, not in sequence by publisher, by title or genre of cover. Uh, it's just really cool stuff that I think is a lot of fun. And we're just going to look at the books. And, you know, relax, have a glass of wine, bourbon, whiskey, whatever your poison is, or none of the above. Don't matter. Listen to some music if you want. Turn me on mute. You're just going to look at the visuals. All right, we're going to start off with the book I actually just recently picked up from another collector. Uh, and it's quite hard to come by, in my opinion. Uh, it's Beware uh, issue number eight here. This is probably, all this material is probably, you know, early to uh, mid-1950s fantastic cover you don't see that too often we're just going to look at the stuff this is going to be a lot of fun uh you know i just spent so much time with the slab books buying slab books at auction looking at gpa analysis sometimes i just need a break from that i just want to get back to the joy of the books i take them out i look at them i'm a weirdo sometimes i smell the books because it has this sort of quality to it uh that is nostalgic for me of collecting comic books when i first started uh, and I just like to have the book in hand and read it. Why not? Friday night, Saturday night, what the hell you need to do out there in this world right now? You've got comic books at home, read them, enjoy them. That's what they're there for. You can always collect them. There's so many dimensions. There's so many uh, ways to approach uh, this hobby or this investment, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I just think having the books in hand is a great thing. And these do go up in value. If you really know how to pick them, uh, you can get the next, quote, classic cover, right? CGC doesn't have to appoint the book classic cover on the label for it to be so. Usually the hobby uh, sometimes will appoint certain books classic cover. So we'll look at that. Uh, here's an astonishing 24. I tried to get these in really good shape. This book is fantastic. I don't know what a grade at, maybe an 8.0. Um, wow, look at the colors, so vibrant. Uh, a lot of these books were um, burnt uh, during, you know, the uh, pre-code era, all the controversy, all the things that happened with these particular books, the decapitation covers, the hand pushing the head into the vat of acid, uh, the uh, sort of violence against people, bondage, all that kind of stuff uh, made these uh, quite controversial. And even today, even today, some of these covers uh, do not fail to shock, right? Ah, here's one I just picked up recently, Boy 11. It's not a it's not a line that is known for horror, but occasionally you will get a, a cover like this that is absolutely fantastic. Iron Jaw holding uh, the lady in the red dress there in heels. Uh, what an awesome, awesome cover. And here's another lady in red also in heels. This book uh, is quite hard to come by. Uh, here it is in, uh, you know, looks like probably a good, very good condition. I just love it. What a composition there with the werewolf, or um, I guess it's saying it's the vampire. The vampire takes a wife. Doesn't that look like a werewolf to you? As opposed to a vampire, but the vampire takes a wife. It literally takes the wife. 
uh, fun stuff. Uh, I've got dozens and dozens of these books I bought off collectors, off the boards, off eBay. I thrifted a couple of them back when you could still do that. And now I just enjoy this. This is probably the most enjoyable part of my entire collection. I've got much more expensive books and rare books than what you're seeing here. But this, this is the part I really love. So uh, Mystic, all these Atlas books are great. You kind of can't do wrong. Pick your favorite cover. Uh, this this guy's uh, grasping for a dear life here with the creature pulling him underwater, a monster among us. And usually they got the side panels here of the other stories uh, that are in the issue. So uh, with the pre-code books, with the pre-code horror, uh, cover to cover, it was not often one storyline. Uh, it was multiple, even with the Atlas, with the EC books. Uh, there are vignettes of stories uh, contained within there. I do like mummy covers. Uh, so when I do find mummy covers, here's a Mystic 22. Uh, I'll pick it up. Great cover right there. Again, uh, the side panels uh, with the other story there. A pretty nice shape. A lot of these Mystic have this uh, black type of cover, which makes it a little bit hard to get in really nice grade. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Here's a Shadow Comics 10, uh, number 12 from 1948. So um, I, I consider this like an early horror uh, cover here. And it's a line that's not really known for um, horror. It's known for sort of detective work. Uh, this one I also recently picked up from another collector. Um, I didn't pay $125 for it. Maybe that's what it sold for at one point in time. Uh, it's got some uh, issues there, but it's just not a book you really see that often. And I think where it, were, we're, were it available, uh, collectors would be uh, very happy to find that. Uh, in a long box or at a show. Uh, here's another recent acquisition. Kind of a tough book to come by. It's a Weird Mysteries 10. Um, awesome. I mean, look at this cover. That's fantastic. It's hard to get these Weird Mysteries in really nice condition. I wouldn't say this issue is a beater. You know, I'm always looking to make sure the cover's uh, attached, uh, that the staples uh, are, are holding the paper uh, quite well. Uh, that there's no major issues, no tears. Uh, I do look at the interior pages. That's a great thing about buying uh, raw books. Uh, if you know grades and you know how to examine these copies, uh, you can always be more informed than the seller uh, because there's so much material on eBay that's available. Now on eBay, they don't have those high res scans that they have on Heritage where you can kind of zoom into the image and really look. Uh, but on Heritage, the graders do, I think, a pretty good job grading uh, the raw book. So if it's very fine or fine or near mint, that's pretty spot on. But on eBay, there's just a lot of material. Some is they'll overgrade, sometimes they'll undergrade. Uh, same thing uh, with collectible coins. Uh, if you know that space, it's, it's quite often uh, if you know a little bit more than the seller, although a lot of that stuff now is all slabbed, uh, you can get ahead. Uh, and you can find a deal. So I do the same thing with horror. I really examine these books. Uh, here's a menace. Uh, I'm not sure what issue this is. Uh, I think it's actually pretty early in the line. Um, all these uh, skeleton covers are great. Let's start firing through these with a little higher frequency here. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, Mystery Tales 17, uh, the, house, the movie House Horror. Uh, this is a good book. Uh, you don't see this one too often. And notice that there's a lot of women in red dresses on these horror uh, covers. Why? I don't know. Maybe it was the fashion in the uh, early 1950s. Uh, I do not know. Might have been the case. Nine, early 1950s. That's probably post uh, New Look uh, Dior, right? That was um, after the war. Um, and getting into the early 1950s, fashion started to change. Started to get more into ready wear. Um, Anyway, uh, Journey into Unknown Worlds, number 18. Uh, I paid $350 for this, which today is probably a quite a nice price because look at the condition of the book. Really nice shape there, and that red is just fantastic. What an awesome line, friends. Uh, continuing with Journey into Unknown Worlds, number 25. Awesome cover right there. <laughs> this creature's just jumping out of the earth, grabbing this dude. Awesome. 
Uh, more mystic. I do like vampire werewolf covers. Here's Behold, the vampire um, right there, the creature in green. You know, these don't look like vampires to me. This is the second book I've seen. I'm like, wow, that's, that's what a vampire looks like. It almost looks like a sort of a hairy type of creature. Um, but it's awesome. You know, mystic comics. This is great. All this stuff coincided uh, with the golden age of horror movies in the cinema. Things like Creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, The Blob. Those are the movies that my mom went to in black and white, and they shriek. Those those films were horrifying. Now, if you watch Creature from the Black Lagoon, you know, the original black and white one, uh, it, it, it's almost like Mystery Science 3000. It's kind of funny. Uh, but at the time that material was in the theaters, uh, it, it horrified people. It was, it was shocking. It was scary. It was dramatic. It was great. Uh, these were fantastic movies. Uh, they were the equivalent of watching, I don't know, The Conjuring or Witch or um, what, you know, whatever the uh, production is today. It's the Evil Dead films. Same result, but quite a bit a while ago. Oh, this is a good, a good one. This is a Ghostly Weird Stories, number 121. I believe this is a coal cover. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, kind of awesome. A lot of detail uh, in these in these books here a lot of detail that's fantastic i might be wrong on this being whole uh so we're just going to open it up you probably already corrected me in the comments you may know the book you may know the artists you know may know the style uh so let's see here if the artist is even credited i don't know you tell me is this coal right here does that look like cole's work awesome nice shape too as i take the book out uh, I really like that. Uh, this is a book that's done quite well over the years. This is, uh, you may recognize it, a Mystic 28. Here's an example of a book that CGC does not call on the label classic cover. It's kind of become classic. This this book is really, I'd say, over the last three, four years, uh, gone up and up in value. Uh, five years ago, you could buy it at a really... Um, moderate uh, price, uh, which today is probably four or five X that. Not all the Golden Age um, pre-code horror have gone up three, four X since that time. This book has. So, you know, pick cool covers, pick stuff you like. Uh, recent acquisition here is a Black Cat Mystery number 48. Um, that's awesome. Uh, just got this creature coming out of the water and, and this, this sort of desperate islander here i don't know what he's doing there because he seems to be actually uh, approaching the figure you know going against the the rain and the wind to, to get near this figure maybe he's so desperate on this island that he just actually wants to die uh and it says could you face the lonely so i guess you know uh you could be intellectual about it and think this is some sort of metaphor <laughs> i don't know can you face the lonely maybe that's like what this figure represents in the water but i mean just take a minute and look at this artwork i mean incredible look at the detail in the sky and and look at the lighting uh and the composition of the figure and the use of the contrast uh in, in all, all the clothing this really is an underrated masterpiece in my opinion it, and it's also kind of a cover that makes you contemplate uh, what the hell's going on? Uh, let's look inside. This is a cool book. You gotta be careful when you open up these books. You usually have tape on the back. You don't want to rush and pull your book out because the cover will get caught in the tape. Remove the tape first. Uh, put the tape down. You're alone. You're drinking. You know what's what's the point of rushing? Because you may spill uh, the bourbon onto the book, and that's no good. Uh, so let's look inside here uh, and see. This is like show and tell, right? For adults, right? Here's picture books for adults. Uh, we never outgrow that. Oh, wow, look at that. That's so cool. I don't know if you can see the artwork there. It's pretty awesome. It's a shipwreck thing. Sometimes I worry about opening these things and kind of leafing through them in a casual way because this book's actually in quite nice shape. Oh, wow, look at this. Look at this image. If you don't, if you don't open the books, see that woman with the, with the dude in her palm? Like you just don't see this great work inside if you don't have the book raw. I mean, granted, I buy a lot of slabbed pre-code horror because some of these titles, you can't get them raw anymore. The only time you could pick up a particular copy 
of weird mysteries or adventures into weird worlds or whatever it is you collect is when the book is available at auction slab. Uh, so I'm always fired up uh, to find it raw. Here's a good one. I like all the standard uh, PCH. I really like the Out of the Shadows line. Uh, here's number 11. These books from the early 1950s have a very, very contemporary look to the artwork. It does not look dated. Why is that? I think this particular style, this very kind of cartoonish, almost graphic style, gruesome yet irreverent, uh, really kind of influenced a lot of comic artists, a lot of uh, genre artists. And that's why it holds up. I mean, can you imagine this book here uh, being, you know, what, 70 years old potentially in that, in that realm? That's absolutely incredible. With the black on top, the red font there. A lot of what's also awesome with these pre-code horror books, it's a case study. It's a case study in graphic design and in fonts. These are masterpieces of composition. Graphic designers today should study this material when they're designing a poster, uh, a record cover, uh, a movie poster. Like these are beyond just a really interesting piece of art and a depiction. There's a lot of thought that goes into the composition, the color here, the red and the font matching the red on the garment of, of this character, uh, the yellow uh, below here with the yellow up there, the yellow in standard. Uh, the guy's hat in yellow. That's all drawing you in visually to a certain type of composition. That's awesome. Oh, it looks like I cracked this out of the slab. I don't know why. It was a, it was a CGC uh, 3.0. Interesting. Uh, I think sometimes with lower grade uh, pre-code horror, I, I don't like it in the slab. What's the point? You know, um, you know, if you're 2.0 to uh, 4.0, unless the book's really rare, uh, I don't think you need to get that material slabbed, and I think I cracked it out. Uh, the fact that I don't remember tells me it's probably a really long time ago. Those are all the books for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll do another one of these videos uh, where I just drink and uh, look at books, and the next one's going to be another stack, another stack of raw pre-code horror, and then I'll get into a stack of raw golden age comic books. I got a lot of those too. Uh, stuff that I just never bothered slabbing. Either I was lazy or I just liked having the book in hand. I've got some early Batman, some early Detective. I got some early Shazam, uh, Captain Marvel Adventures, uh, Blue Beetle, Mystery Men comics, a lot of that stuff raw. Which means, friend, that the census report of CGC does not tell you everything. Obviously, it, those are the copies that are slabbed, but quite often, uh, when someone's selling a book, they'll say, you know, only 20 copies in grade, right? And then you've got all the ones in uh, CBCS that are not in the CGC uh, census report and, you know, God forbid, some PGX books. Uh, anyway, friends, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Please like. Please share the content uh, if you'd like it on other platforms. And I hope you have a real good one. Ciao.